And we are live! Welcome, friends. Uh, this is my unboxing video of a Desert Tech MDR in 223556. It has just been released. If you are looking for a Desert Tech MDR in 223556, they're actually on the market now. And there are multiple Desert Tech uh, dealers who have them in stock. I got mine at Carolina's First Defense, based it out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Not technically Charlotte, North Carolina, city or town outside. Anyway, in North Carolina, and they currently have multiple 223-556 MDRs in stock. Hey, Mad Sexy, nice to see you join the stream. How's life? Good. I've been waiting three years for my MDR. I'd say life is good today. So let's kick right into this. Take out the barrel. This is the default case that the MDR is shipped with. It is specifically made for the MDR and it fits only the MDR. Unfortunately, it only fits the MDR when it is disassembled. So you kind of have to buy a separate gun case if you want to transport an assembled MDR. So that was the barrel, and this would be the upper and lower receiver. The handguard. And a magazine. Get this out of the way. Oh, welcome, Mel the Nut. This could be a fun chat. Well, with me at the reins, hopefully it is a fun chat. Either it's fun or it's cringe. There's nowhere in between with me. Hope it's more fun than cringe. Sometimes I question about my role in Never Enough Ammo's chats. So, the first step to assembly is obviously to make sure it's on safe and clear. Currently it's obviously disassembled, but for the sake of showing clear, there's no barrel, nothing, it's empty. So first step, lock it back, so you just pull it back and up like you would with an HK. Second step. You see this uh, lock unlock tab here. Let's see, that's the lock position. Unlock. I already, let's see, are these tightened or loosened? Yeah, they're pretty loose. So you need the barrel nuts loose and the barrel retaining thing unlocked. Then you put the barrel in. There we go. And then you drop the bolt. Now with the bolt dropped, you turn the lock. to locked, then you take a Torx wrench, sorry, a torque wrench, and you torque the, <coughs> oh god, sorry people, dinner. You torque the barrel screws, the barrel nuts, to 80 inch pounds, I believe is the requirement. I have a Fixix Sticks 80 inch pound torque wrench, so... Why 
turning this the wrong way? Why is it not activating? 80 inch pound. How high am I? Okay, that is way more than 80 inch pounds. Scratch everything I've said. My torque wrench is stupid, and I have done messed up, eh, Ron? 80 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. That's what it says. Okay, really quick, for the sake of argument, let's take this 30. That's 30. That's normal. That's normal. Why are you stupid? Touch is there. Mad sex, you're really high. High as a kite? Hopefully not. Deciding how to work with this. No. Okay. This is going to be more of a pain than I thought it would be. I'm just going to pretend that I know what 80 inch pounds feels like. Eh, 80 inch pounds. Worry about torque later. Okay, step one. Buy a better torque wrench. That's the first step. After you've torqued those to 80 inch pounds, let's pretend I did that. You can take the handguard, just slide it on. With 90% less fail than I have. Okay, step one, push out the body pin because I'm a doofus and somehow fail even more. Step one, figure out how to push out the body pin, and if you're pushing it out the, wrong, the correct side. I can't be this inept, can I? Huh. Okay. Step two, uh, step one, get a better torque wrench. Step two, be less inept than Link. Gotta get a damn hammer. I'll be back with a hammer. Ooh, AC-97 is in the page. Welcome, AC-97. To answer your question, I am a retard and do not have a mallet. Ah, oh, hammer works. Okay. Now, after removing, sliding out the body pin, now you put on the handguard. Okay, what am I doing wrong now? Loosen those, loosen that. 
Why not the pin? Why did it go on that time? I don't know. Ah. I gotta say, at least it's stiff and has no play. That sucker's really on there. Mallet of Freedom. Hey, it works. Okay, step th step one, get a better torque wrench than Link got. Step two, be less inept than Link. Step three, use a hammer or mallet. Let's see, AC97 asks, to repeat the question I asked earlier, is this what the ACR should have been? This is better than an ACR. Um, I think if Desert Tech had designed the ACR, you actually would have gotten caliber conversions. Because unlike Remington, Desert Tech actually follows through on its caliber conversions. To be fair, I should have seen the hammer thing coming because it's been in every single in-range video on the MDR so far. Should have known I should have needed a hammer. Neato Petito. So, oh, bolt, uh, bolt release is back here. So, bolt release. Or just. So in the last round, it would lock back, but not with the handles. So the handles would still be forward. And then you would strip the mag out with the button. Then you put a new mag in. And then close the bolt with your thumb. Step five, give finger to the, give finger to the ATF. Good idea. So we have get a better torque wrench. Better than Link got. Be less inept than Link. Use a hammer. Wait, no, they're not. You jump to step five, which is give finger to the ATF. What was step four? Oh, God, I need to stop with the meth. I am losing my memory. Step four, profit. Dot, 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 profit. That is step four now. Well, so here is the ejection panel. Ooh, if you wanted to see... Here is the ejection scissor mechanism that just pops on, and then the ejection chute pops on like that. So when a casing pops out, do I have a loaded mag? Yes, I do. So. When a casing pops out, chambered, lock back. So, God, that launches that sucker. Okay, mm hmm. There it goes. Pops the little door open to eject forward. Yeah, death pop coming. Uh-huh. Little do you know, I actually, that way, have an AR-500 plate specifically so that in the event I have a discharge, it hits the armor plate. So right now my MDR is pointing at an armor plate. Well, technically it's pointing at a bunch of sleek accessories and then an armor plate. Yes, step four, laugh at Link. So dot, 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 profit, laugh at Link. To answer, uh, you said forward thinking with the um, plate. Uh, oh, Mel the Nut, it is a body armor plate, so it has an anti-spalling coating that catches all the spalling. It's not just a random plate. Um, 
And for forward ejecting, sorry, for thinking, uh, I know Yankee has a uh, bucket of sand, but I like having an armor plate because it's easier and less messy. The price tag on this is 2200 for the 223556 and 2500 for 308 for the MDR. That said, I'm about six grand deep in this with optics and bipod, ammo, everything included, as well as conversions. So, next I want to see if these will fit on. Oh, that's some tight tolerances there. Oh god, that's tight. Well, let's see if it works. Rupon RX has just got my M uh, Microtech MSAR stock to work with my Steyr USR receiver. Took a while having to work on the mag latch and modifying the trigger group. Didn't know they would be compatible. Aren't the Microtech uh, pretty much AUGs? Aren't the Microtech AUGs more valuable and more collectible than Steyr? Adjusting the torque on the Wheeler wrench. Let's see. Perpendicular, not perpendicular. Gotta redo this one. Perpendicular, good. Mad Sexy asks, how does the torque go on the wheeler uh, how does the torque go on the wheeler wrench go? It is from ten inch pounds to sixty-five. Most torque wrenches that are adjustable are only good in, like, the middle-ish zone. So this is good about starting at 15 and ending at maybe 50. But in this case, there is a gauge. I hope you can see this. Let's see. Rotate. There's a gauge with a little red line there that you pull back this plate and rotate it to adjust that red line up and increase the torque. So in this case, recommended 15 inch pounds for uh, M-lock mounting to polymer rails, up to 35 for um, M-lock mounting to metal uh, M-lock slots. So, proof of concept. Does it interfere? Yes, it interferes with the charging handle. That is very unfortunate, which means the legs have to go forward. To be fair, if you only, actually, if you keep them in a middle position, it's stupid, but technically, not in the way. But when up, it would keep you from charging the charging handle. So, deciding what I should do with these. Let's see what it looks on the other side.
Vandaliska Vlog says, what about forward? Uh, could you clarify what you mean, what about forward? Not perpendicular at all. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, facing the legs forward. Yes. So, if I were to do that, my question there is if you face the legs forward, would they reach forward of the muzzle device, which they probably would, which means you're going to be damaging certainly the rubber, with the muzzle blast. Perpendicular, perpendicular, good. Now to torque it. Okay. Now these two legs are mounted differently. Uh, Rupin RX, if you want, these are Voltor legs. They're $170 on Amazon. Uh, UTG also makes a knockoff of them. That is $50, $60, something like that. Uh, in InRange's recent video, they made an argument about bipods with bull pups that with an AR, you can still have a good grip on the gun, and your bipod is farther forward, not where you grip the gun. So that makes it very easy on most conventional guns. But bullpups make it tricky because there's so little space on the front of the gun for you to grip that you have to choose between either have a place to grip the gun or have a bipod. I chose have a FAMAS-style bipod that gives you the best of both, where you get a bipod and the ability to have gripping space. So this is on the front. Uh, this is if the m -lock, if the leg is mounted all the way forwards and pointing backwards. This is mounted all the way backwards, pointing backwards. If I want to... Yeah, I'd say they go forward of the muzzle brake. Muzzle device. Not sure I want to do that. That said, I don't plan to keep this bipod on this handguard. Uh, I am getting two handguards. This handguard is the default stock handguard. The company that makes rails for the RDB and a few other uh, guns called Lucky Irishman Firearms, they make a handguard for the MDR. And that is the handguard I will be putting the bipod on. So, hopefully that one works better. That said, let's see, something like that. Yeah, okay. Useful to know. Mad Sexy says, can't you bolt them up higher? Do you mean on these slots up here rather than these? These slots are just vent holes. They aren't M-lock. I mean, I could do down here, but that would just look stupid.
So, lesson learned about this bipod. Get it with the longer handguard. Especially with the suppressor. This with the suppressor would be kick ass. Next, I would like to be able to put my sling on. So that means, give me a moment to grab sling. Vandalistica vlog says, possibility of bipod legs that compress to a shorter length when stowed. These legs actually do compress. Currently, they are compressed. If I extend that, it gets longer to lift the gun up more. There are a shorter version of this that, instead of 7 inches stowed, is 5 inches. And that would still put it right at the charging handle here. I measured this before I bought these and had another friend with an MDR compare. And he determined that it would just barely clear this. And I didn't expect, because this would actually still function on the body of the leg here. It's all the hardware where it gets caught up. Yes, there is a shorter version of this leg that is shorter and then expands longer. I chose the longer version of this because it would give more height to the MDR when going prone, allowing you to use a 30 round mag. So now I have to decide what color of sling do I want. Do I want yet another version of FDE, or do I want black? What do you guys think in the chat? Oh, I will be running a strap. Give me a second to illustrate for you. Sorry for the delay. Here is my PDR. If you observe the strap going around the back of the stock to a D-ring, which will be grabbed by the mash hook on the sling. That is what I'm going to do with the MDR. Should I choose Another shade of FDE or black? FDE, black for contrast. Combo colors, so I think John means black. Matt Sexy really wants FDE. So black for contrast, or FDE for ultimate scar goodness of none of the colors match. Does this even match? Oh, of course it matches, from the same manufacturer. Of course it matches. I can do FDE later, for now I'm going to start with black. So put this aside. This is just sling material. I contacted the owner who makes this sling and said, yo, I want a spool of your sling material. He's like, 
you serious? I'm like, yeah, I just want a spool of your sling material so it color matches. It's like, okay. AC97 asks, what, is, what even is the SCARS FTE color scheme? I think the SCARS FTE color scheme is babies from different parents who feed them different, uh, who feed them different food. And they have different color of poop. So, I have another video on why I like the Irene Adaptive Sling. Check that out if you're interested. Great for bull pups. Absolutely ideal for bull pups. Undo this thing a thing. Now the spool. Yep, undone spool. Ah, that's what I need. Anchor points. Now, for the PDR, it has a neat little thumb hole here that's just perfect for uh, being an anchor point on the front to run to the back of the stock, secured by a triglide friction stop. However, the MDR has its magazine release right here instead of just a wall. So I need to get creative. So what do I do? Magpul QD points acting as the anchor. Well, that was horrible. So in this case, like how the straps wrap around the front here. In this case, they will wrap around right here for a much shorter bridge. The advantage there is with this one, it's kind of static. It's stuck there. You can't remove it quickly. With this, if ever I want to remove the sling point, uh, the rear strap, I just undo it. So that's Nito Petito. Thankfully, I actually don't need a whole lot of slinging material for this. Like, this took several feet, because there's multiple wraps around. Each one of them is, what, 10 inches, 11 inches long, something like that. This one has a relatively short distance. So you measure out the length of what you need. There's my... D-ring. Couple tri-glide tri friction stops. Side note, if you don't want to D-ring as the back for a mash hook to grab, so in this case I just, if this were on the back of the gun, you just clip in like that and the mash hook grabs that. I like this because it just doesn't let go and when you go to shoulder the gun, your shoulder pushes this out of the way so it lays flat and really doesn't, you really don't feel it even under recoil. Mad Sexy says, are you short or tall? I am a short boy. So if you don't want a um, D ring for a mash hook, if instead you want a QD point, Blue Force Gear sells this burnsed socket adapter that in the case of the um, strap at the back like I do, you would run it through like that at the back of the gun. So, burp. You would have it something like that, and this puts a QD point anywhere you want on a strap. Mad Sexy says, you won't need much material. Oh, this isn't to actually strap the gun. All it does is provide a rear sling point. I'll use this as an example. For the PDR here, you have a QD point at the front on the rail, but then your only real option from the factory for a QD point is this stupid little loop there that you put like a key ring in. It, it's stupid and that sucks. 
for all my bull pups, I run to the very back with a D ring, and that grabs this. So my height doesn't matter because this is my actual sling. This isn't the sling, this is just a rear sling point. So in this case, the amount of material that I need is pretty much only the space between these. So wrapping around between these two back and forth multiple times. Anyway, if you don't want a D-ring, Blue Force Gear sells a burn socket adapter. It goes in a strap, so if you put it on your gun um, like this, it gives you a QD point. I like having the mash hook for the rear for security and then a QD point on the front. You can also put this on, the sl on any sling itself to convert it from just a two-point sling into a Magpul style one-point to two-point convertible sling. Anyway, but I will not be using this because I like the D-ring. And yes, I just said I like the D. Okay, gonna shut up now. This, is, has, this has been your cringe portion of the stream. Or is that the disgust portion of the stream? How about both? I'll take both for 500, Alex. But I didn't realize how squishy and nice the stock of the MDR felt. That's pretty cool. Oh, for the MDR, my front point's just going to be a Magpul RSA with a QD. Boop. Easy. It works. So let's try this. You know what's ironic that I could use now? A bipod. Perpendicular, perpendicular, perpendicular. Good for you. Perpendicular, perpendicular. Good for you. So, any questions from the chat? Perpendicular, perpendicular, good for you. You are not special needs today. Range test video. My first trip to this range, I plan to put it through a 1,000 round torture test and post it on this video, post it on this channel. So my hope is to 
prove that the 5.56 MDR is awesome, and it doesn't suck. Because there are a lot of people, there's a fairly significant number of people who believe that uh, all bullpups are unreliable, and those people are wrong. Matt Sexy asks, what's the advantage of this over an AR? That one's actually quite easy to explain. Other than all the caliber conversions, other than all the wonderfulness that is what makes the MDR better than other bullpups, I will relate the question as a basis, which is, what is the advantage of a bullpup over an AR-15? Because that's easier to get into without getting into model-specific things, for which I believe the MDR, assuming it's reliable, is the best bullpup on the market. So the question of what makes a, what's the advantage of a bullpup over an AR-15? That. It is short. That is 26.1 inches long. And to get 21.6 inches long from pretty much anything else, from an AR, would require an AR pistol with, what is it, like a 10 inch barrel? And a 10 inch barrel really sucks in 5.56. However, this gives you a full 16 and a half inch barrel. point I flung something across the room and I don't know where it went. Damn blind am I? Did I just lose my Torx bit? AC97 says a, a 7.5 inch barrel sucks even more for 5.56. Yeah, the 5.56 starts losing energy and ballistic capability insanely quickly as you get to shorter barrel lengths. Personally, I think ARSBRs, once they get below 14 inches, you're really just neutering what you can do. There we go. Nope, that is a hex bit. Why is that there? How blind am I? It's missing from this thing. Oh, there you are. There we go. Got to tighten these. Back to the sling. So in general, the reason I chose this over an AR for home defense is quite simple. Length. Also, it's baller cool and ARs don't really interest me, but Length is the primary reason I chose this. I knew I wanted a bullpup, so as to keep a 16 inch, 16 inch barrel, but have a usable length that sheds more than a foot off of a typical AR. And I figured if I'm getting a bullpup, might as well get the best bullpup. Tri-glide friction stops. So, ooh, that's... Pretty close there, actually. 
it realize. Let's see. This here, I might only be able to get one triglide friction, triglide friction stop, not two. It still works. It's just not symmetrical. Which triggers me! Trigger me, Timbers! Rupin RX says, My Muzzleite Mini 14 Bullpup might beat the MDR and RDB. That's gotta be sarcasm, right? A Mini 14, then put into a Bullpup shell, but without fixing any of the ergonomical reliability issues with Mini 14s in a Bullpup. You're giving me an aneurysm. <laughs> How to do this? He gads. Yeah, there's only room for one triglide friction stop. Let's like put it under here. Yep, okay. This is my life. So. something like this unless that is the top and the triglide is underneath god that'll be convoluted but I think it's possible okay I'm gonna try and illustrate what I'm doing here try and show this on camera Come on, bipod legs, give me a tripod. <laughs> it works as a tripod, that's really funny. Ooh, perfect. Okay. This is what I'm going for, something like that. I need a triglide friction stop in there in order to secure it. Now I have kind of two options. We're going to derp -der, threading it through the triglide. I've kind of two options. One, put the triglide friction stop at the back there, and then this guy hangs out here or here. Second option, which is more convoluted, can't say I've done this before, but put the triglide friction stop there, and then this guy. goes on top of it, so it can swing freely right and left. Thoughts? Can't say I've done this before with the triglide friction stop underneath. Hypothetically possible. What do you guys think? That sexy says two, so do the underneath. Side note, it's actually kind of impressive that my bipod legs function as a tripod but to keep it vertical. That's kind of funky and weird. Okay, try it out under seems to be the consensus. The more I use those bipod legs, I like them. I don't want to trade that out or change it for something else. I actually really like those bipod legs. So, one loop like that. Second one goes like this. One thing I actually didn't expect is how nice the rubber on the MDR butt pad would be. Like, geez, that's it actually feels really cool. Okay. Something like that. And then I run. 
run it through the tri-glide. Underneath. That's the only option, so... Sorry, trying to figure out how... Uh, lining it through would work. One on top. And you thread it through the back. God, this is convoluted. I feel like the meme of the science woman with the equations in her head when something's confusing. This guy out to make this easier. Oh god, yeah, that makes it so much easier. I can actually show that on camera. So that would be like that. So this line goes in through, then through the triglide friction stop, through the second swivel then around to create a barrier between the friction stop and the D-ring. Back over the friction stop, not through it, which means it cuts off access to the friction stop from the top, but not the bottom. Then back through this, then, then, strap goes back over to hold the D-ring, but there is a layer of nylon between the D-ring and the friction stop. Now this is where detaching becomes useful, you slide it underneath and then through the triglide friction stop again. So you have two lines going through the triglide friction stop. I honestly don't know if this will properly secure it because this is kind of like backwards opposite what it should be. Okay, so now we tighten it from this end. Got it, so we tighten it like this. Snap it back in. Sorry, I know this is boring. However, I realize I've never actually done a tutorial of how to do this. That's looking pretty good. Oh. Looks like I got a... Yeah, I got a few strays. Forgot to do this part. Hey friends, if you're doing this... Remember to always fray your, uh, burn your nylon webbing to prevent fraying. <sighs> 
forgot to do that part. And if you do it correctly, yep, there should be a good bead. So instead of being woven, it should be like a bead of solid, what amounts to, nylon is plastic, what amounts to melted plastic. Good. Stay that way. Where the hell were we? I'm wondering if anybody else is still in the chat. Much less long enough to see that I had an M16 shaped lighter. Okay, so that needs to be a little bit tighter. Hi, Rupin. Hi, Gabe. Hi, Mad Sexy. Present for duty, says John Z. God, when it's tight, it makes the QD points hard to get out. Should have seen that coming. Just enough to barely get it. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Face review just happened. I don't know what that means. That's nice and tight, I like that. So if it pulls on the weight of the rifle... Yeah, that's pretty solid. Ah! Showed half my face. Yes, I do those on my streams. I have done that at least once before. So now, now that my sling is at the proper length and properly tightened, go to the length that is remaining. Snip off a bit. Cut the line. burn it shut again. What even is science? Okay, let's try this again. Burp, burp. There we go. I just realized this entire thing is literally that, and I'm an idiot for overcomplicating this. This. This is what I've created. That simple. Like, 
Seriously? I'm disappointed with myself that I overcomplicated what amounts to a singular loop going through a trigraph fri friction stop twice with all the stuff on... God, this is... Okay, yeah, and then you plop it in there. And you plop it in there. Oh god, that's nice and tight, I like that. Come on, tripod, let's do this again. So now, you have a nice sling point. Let me grab a sling. So when you're carrying it, it carries like that. If you go to your right shoulder, it flicks to the right, uh, to the left side of the gun. If you go to your right, sh uh, to your left shoulder, it flicks to the right side of the gun. Neato. So, I'm gonna undo this again. It's pretty stiff. That's how it should be. So in case you have a rifle that has QD points on both sides, all you gotta do is make something like this. So, a loop, tri-glide friction stop, two things coming out of it, two magpole QD swivels, and a D-ring. If you wanted to, instead of the D-ring, you could put the Blue Force Gear burn socket adapter instead. This happens to be on an MDR, but I think there are AR-15 stocks that have dual QD points on either side like this. Let's see, checking out the chat after being engrossed in my silly slinging. Mad Sexy says, after he talks shit about AR-15s, AR-15s aren't bad, but SBR ARs kinda neuter the cartridge. And I think if you want a shorter 5.56 gun, bullpup is the way to go. See what Chad is saying. Oh yeah, I see. I completely forgot about those range videos with the P90 and the KSG. Gabe Stark, you dirty mind. AC97 says, hashtag, no, really, you are at a disadvantage on so many levels compared to an AK. I'm going to say that is the longest, most convoluted hashtag I've ever seen. You're really at a dis- Oh, with a Mosin. I'm like, uh huh? Let's see. A little bit more. Just getting it just that little bit extra tighter. Too loose. The juice. The juice is loose. 
Well, that's good. Oh, yes, daddy. Tread on me harder, daddy. Okay. So this is my final setup for the sling. So, Magpul QD swivel, Magpul QD swivel, and a sling that goes to either side. With, due to the protrusion of the triglide friction stop, it has just a little bit of a detent. So, sling point from, in this case, Magpul, just goes on the front, Okay, step one, stop being a whore. Nope, nope, step one is get a better torque wrench. We've learned this, the neighbors do exorcisms on Thursdays. Oh, that's a good question, it's time I do that. Uh, Rupin RX asks what optic is going on. Uh, a Hartman MH1 for home defense. I have a Vortex 6, to 6 through 24 by 50 for the 308 and long range shooting. I currently have a 1 to 4 uh, low, power volt, low power variable uh, optic for like freedom fighting and general purpose. I plan to get Trigicons 1 to 8. Uh, low power volt, low power <coughs> What is wrong with me? Low power variable optic. Oh, actually, I can show you. Let's see. So if I'm doing that, I am done with sling, so I can put this away. Scar fanboy, an HK fanboy that supposedly has lots of them. Just kind of the worst kind of person. Ah, the juice. Yes. Going to use the barrel mount thing for zero. Yes. Um, with a torque wrench uh, on the barrel nuts, you can get back to your old zero. Not perfectly. Not as good as keeping the optic on the barrel. But you can get very close back to zero by torquing these properly. I don't know what's wrong with my current torque wrench, but it isn't torquing. So I might as well get into the good stuff. So, if I'm going to use a flashlight, better use the best damn flashlight on the market. The Cloud Defensive Owl.
There we go. Uh, Mad Sexy says, a uh, wada wada. I'm wondering if you're asking about the Cloud Defensive Owl. This is a $400 weapon light. It is one of the most premium weapon lights you can get. With it mounted, now I can show you. So in this case, do I install the battery backwards? That's what happens when Link is stupid. Oh, hey, Night Strike. Nice to see you pop in. Don't desk pop the table. No mag? Can't show clear at the moment. No mag? Action empty. Anyway, this is a cloud defensive owl. Runs on an 18650 rechargeable battery. Oh, there we go. So, now that I've actually installed the battery the correct way, if you hold it, it's temporary on. If you tap it, it's constant on. It is an integrated single piece unit, so there's no wires to get frayed, there's no... I've tried wires with Surefires before, and I've never found a single wire unit, you know, where it's just like a tube light with a stupid wire coming out the back here. They always snap off or pull off, I've done it with other guns where you're going to charge your handle and you go like this and your fingers grab a wire and just yank the wire out. It's awful. Can't stand wires. So the Cloud Defensive is a single unit. If you want uh, illumination specs, six uh, 1,200 lumens and 50,000 candela, making it one of the highest output lights from an 18650 on the market. Oh, hi, Night Strike. You've been here the whole time. Well, nice to see you comment. So that is the Cloud Defensive Owl. And here is the Hartman MH1. Hartman, MH1. So, I'm going to see if I can show you this. Let's see, i got to line it properly. Camera is there. Oh, oh, for a second I had it. Actually, I'm going to shut this on the gun, then show you. Tripod mode engage. Let's see if I can. It's on. Oh, and, and, and there we go. Actually, I should flip this around for you. It's upside down, isn't it? It 
should. There we go. So. Burp. No, it's right. Come on. Difficult lining it up. Okay, there's the reticle for you. Sorry I can't do a better job at that. There's the reticle for you. Gah. Sorry. Hard to do that with the camera. What camera do you use? <laughs> a Logitech 720p camera that I bought almost 10 years ago. It is potato. It's not very good. Let's see, comments. Link must be rich. Not entirely rich. I live on a very meager income, but I prioritize uh, getting good gear instead of saving a little bit of money on getting gear that might fail me. And when getting this, at the point I paid $3,000 for a rifle, I'm like, screw it, I'm going to make it the best damn rifle I can. If I chose the best bullpup, then I might as well get the best home defense optic and the best light that I can. And then I'm like, fine, I get good bipod and best damn sling I can. I, I, I just gave up and it became a money pit and now it's glorious. So my hope here is to have the most tricked out MDR with the highest stuff. Lightstrick says lives off ramen. Actually, I live off white rice, which is cheaper than ramen if you buy it in bulk. Is Night Strike messaging me on Steam? Is this a message? Now, th things about the Hartman. I mean, oh, this is a Cloud Owl, Cloud Defensive Owl, optimized weapon light, and this is a Hartman MH1. It has an internal rechargeable battery that you just plug into USB. It has a backup CR123 battery. It has a motion activated auto on auto off feature similar to what Hollow Sun has, but way better. With Hollow Sun, it's simply any motion or vibrations makes the site turn on. And it's really overactive and annoying in some ways. And it just annoyed me. The Hartman is far better implemented in that it recognizes the difference between being held by a human and just normal vibrations. For example, right now, if I look through this, the site is off. However, if I pick it up, the site is on. It recognizes it as motion sensors that recognize the act of being shouldered. And that's really neat. It also has a... It has the rechargeable battery. It has an optional remote that I didn't get, actually, that you can put, like, on the handguard of your AR that lets you control all the functions wirelessly to the MH1. Other than that, it's used by the IDF and is just as tough as Trijgon. This thing is, I mean, it's just a behemoth of how strongly built it is. Oh, Night Strike, thanks for the subscription. I apologize in advance for the awful shit tier content you are receiving. Night Strike says, I want a Galil. Yeah, yeah, if I were to get an AK, Galil might be it. Other than that, it has the dot with the three-line reticle you have. You have It's holographic like an EOTech, rather than just being a red dot. So if you have an astigmatism, Hartman is, to my knowledge, one of only three good options you have, which is EOTech, Hartman, and the new Vortex UH-1. Vector R4 Gallo. I actually don't know what that is. 
based on the name Vector, I'm assuming you mean the South African manufacturer. Let's see. Rails. Sling. Might as well size the sling and do that now. Melvinut, gotta go and get him to be bedtime. Okay, have a good night, Melvinut. This is the sling I choose to use for all my bull pups. It is a Irene Adaptive Sling by Mission Spec. And I will be sizing this to the MDR right now. It's your homework tonight. Look up the Vector R4. So step one, size it to me. Good night, Mel the Nut. Thank you for joining us. a longer leg, more extension. This needs to be shorter around. Now if you want a video on why I use the Arena Adaptive Sling, I already have like a one hour stream about that, in which I promised to show you me using it with the MDR, and that was more than a year ago, maybe two years ago. I've been waiting that long for my MDR. In case you're still watching the video, I've waited for this MDR for three years now? Yes, three years. That is a long time. So right now, I am tightening up the Irene Adaptive Sling so it fits my torso better rather than the length that comes from, from the factory. So after this, I plan to do a 1,000 round torture test of my MDR. Just dumping 1,000 rounds at the range. That'll be fun, especially for the brass goblins at the range. That'll be extra fun. Let's see the sling on me or the gun. That's pretty well fit right now. How many mags do you have for this? I have only four or five 308 mags because 308's not a defensive caliber to me. I just wanted a couple 10s, a couple 20s, and a 25. That's it. Um, oh, for the 1,000 round test, I have... I last counted it up, and it was 360 rounds worth of magazines that I have. I just got three more magazines yesterday in the mail, and another 30 rounder. So that's four mags, 30 rounds each, 120 rounds, 360 plus 120, 480 rounds among all my mags. I think. So let's see. I'm going to size this to me and then show it on camera then.
it will be a lot of reloading. I've actually been doing tests of just loading pistol mags for a thousand rounds to see if my camera battery for my GoPro will actually last long enough to last for how long it takes to load and fire a thousand rounds. At least on the assumption that AR mags take are just as take just as long as handgun mags, which they don't. AR mags are faster to load than most handgun mags because you just pop them down. times like this, I wish I could just shove on some music to fill the dead silence in the stream. And I'm like, yeah, but YouTube doesn't like that. <laughs> Do you have a not Barry? Oh, Barry's dead. Uh, did AC leave? Ooh, AC's still here. Hi, AC! I am Commander Link, and AC is my favorite person on the Citadel. Another reason I wouldn't put on music, Mad Sexy, is... Yes, I just made a Mass Effect reference. That's right. Another reason I wouldn't put on music is... Not everyone's taste in music is the same. And probably most of you don't want to listen to baby metal. Or Disturbed. Yeah. Copyright. Vandalistica Vlogs, do you like baby metal? Because I will have you know if you like baby metal. Disturbed likes baby metal. A lot. Almost as much as Rob Zombie does. Testing it on me again. Metalcore, post-hardcore. Time to go farm in Fallout 76. Hey, 
You say you don't like to farm, and that's why you don't like Warframe. Guess what Warframe has? NPCs you don't have to pay for. Have a good night, Mad Sexy. It's worse than Taurus's QC. YouTube's copyright system or Fallout 76? Oh, I'm giving him too much shit for Fallout 76. Issy's response? Yes. Both of them. Oh, Vandalistica Vlogs. You used the full acronym for Mad Sexy. <laughs> I, that's a name I haven't heard for a long time. <laughs> uh. Ah, Warframe is all grind, like Link High Rules grinder account. Yes, you are, sir. Correct you are. Burp, burp. Now a longer arm. Time to test. Clip into the rear. Clip into the front. Oh god, this is hard with a headphone cord on me. Ugh, awkward standing. No pants. Let's see. If it's my torso well, I can still y aim it well in two point mode. Uh oh. Vandalistica Vlogs saw something.
Well, thanks for joining, Night Strike. In case you guys wanted to see the sling on me with the gun on me, I want to readjust the camera. So I think this is the best I can do like this. Where's my mouse? Still good. Okay, keep in mind I am horizontal right now. So, two point sling, detach, still one point but connected to me. So, when pushing down, it would hang just about there. I think I might want to adjust the sling a little bit so it rides a little bit higher. So far, I'm pretty happy with this. Oof. That table is not meant to support that weight. There we are. That's just a butt. My butt? Oh no. Meant to keep my butt off the screen. If you want to check out the sling, I have an entire video on it showing it with the KSG. Uh -oh. Excuse me again. Showing it with the KSG before I got the MDR. I suppose I can provide a little. Does it still drop down your center on two points? Drop down your center. At no point is the sling disconnected from you. The sling in two-point mode keeps it almost perfectly where your shoulder should be. I need to adjust this a little bit. I'll probably do that off-camera so it adjusts higher and stays at my shoulder. In one-point mode, it doesn't have that tension, so it will droop a little bit lower by eight inches. Actually, it'll droop lower by whatever distance you set by this. So this is the distance it would droop by. So... What is that, nine inches it would droop by? If I change this to like that, it would droop by like four inches in uh, single point mode instead of two point mode. If I change it to that, it would droop by only like two inches in one point mode as opposed to two point mode. But I want to have a lot of reach to make it easy to, gr uh, to grab the line forward for more length. I'll show you how this works. Hopefully I'm still partially in screen here. Let's see. Yeah, partially in screen. So this is the rear point that grabs the butt of the stock. This is up at my right shoulder, on top of my right shoulder. This stays down at my left side, near my hip. When I want to attach the front point, I reach down and I grab it, and I extend it forward. Now if this were short, I couldn't, well, if this were properly sized and short, I sized it to give me extension, but if this were short, it wouldn't reach as far. Does that answer your question, Vandalistica Vlogs? Invert it. That is good. So right now what I am doing, let's see, so with the high attachment point for the buttstock, you'll never smack yourself in the junk if you're completely hands off of it. Correct. It is 
completely dangle free and extremely secure. Uh, and that's with two point mode. With one point mode, the it holds the gun near your shoulder on your side, but not in your front like a one point sling does with an AR, or like most one point slings do. It's a very unique sling. I have a video about it elsewhere on my channel. I mostly use it to show the uh, the KSG and a few other bullpups. I didn't have the MDR at the time. <laughs> that was two years ago, and I've been waiting for three years for this gun. So what I'm doing now is what I do with... Ooh, I can tighten that up. Yay! Yay! Hooray! My anus is bleeding! Ignore me completely, please. I don't think I've explained this. Um, Jeez, if you follow me on Facebook at all, you would know. Um... I am pretty hardcore about slings, and I've bought almost every single notable sling on the market. Every ma every generation of Magpul, uh, a fair number of Condor slings, didn't really expect much from them. Blue Force Gear Vickers, the Viking Tactical Sling, most major slings on the market I have tried out, and including obviously the uh, Arena Adaptive Sling. And the Rean Adaptive Sling handily beats them all if you want the best possible sling. There are certain things that the Viking and Blue Force Vickers Sling do that they have a slight advantage on this in a specific role. If you don't want a cool, weird sling like this, if all you want is a very traditional two-point sling, then the Blue Force Gear Vickers and the Viking give you just a traditional two-point sling that is quickly adjustable. And the quick adjustment system on those is pretty slick. With this, the quick adjustment is you pull this to tighten it, to cinch it to your back. That's really neat. And I will later be adding on a pull tab to add a loop for a quick pull tab. But the Blue Force Gear Vickers and the Viking come with that. If all you want is a traditional two-point sling, that's it. Personally, I'd much rather have a convertible sling. This sling does three modes. It can do what I call 2.5, or a re adaptive sling mode, which is this, exactly as I've described, which is not a three-point sling. This loop here goes around your torso, a three-point sling makes a strap span the gun. So this is not a three-point sling. So it can do this. It can also just do two-point sling mode. In which this is just a normal two-point sling. Once you release the buckle. Or you release the QD. And now you have a one-point sling. Pop the QD back in, and we're back to the Irene Adaptive's special mode that no other sling really does, which is, it's in essence a one-point sling that hugs your uh, torso like a one-point sling does, except instead of one arm, it has two. That's a big difference. In Range's tutorial in three-point slings was hilarious. That is something I'm always careful to talk about with the Irene Adaptive sling is, it's not a three-point sling. Three-point slings have specific flaws that this doesn't have. This really is a very advantageous sling. Anyway, what I am doing now, I'm going to grab a KSG to show you. Give me a second. Aha, now we are getting into desktop territory. Because this one, oh god, I was about to say coming in hot from circulation or some nut and fancy term. This one is loaded because home defense shotgun. If you notice, the Irene Adaptives thing here, I keep bound with a zip tie, a Velcro zip tie, so it's just a Velcro tie that keeps the sling up and taut between the rear and front points 
so that it doesn't interfere with the action at all. A sling in a home defense scenario can be a liability for catching on furniture, being grabbed by a bad guy, catching on and messing with your pump or reciprocating charging handle. A sling on a defensive gun for home defense can be a serious liability. But if you want a sling, in the event you do want it, this gives you the ability to have it not be a liability until you just rip the uh, Velcro tie off or just yank harshly on the sling and it will undo the Velcro tie. So that is what I'm going to do with this MDR. Is bind it with bind the sling with a Velcro tie. So let's see. Where do I want to bind this? Good point here. I adjust that so I can do it better. did I buy my last one? That's why. Because the distance between the sling points was shorter. I was wondering why this one isn't behaving doing what I normally do. So let's see if I bind that like that. There we go. That's nice and bound up. Let's pull this backwards and pull this forward. So, if I snap this back in. Right there is where I want it. Okay, so I expand this just a little bit. Sorry for the boring content. I need to learn to be a better streamer, because I suck ass. Suck ass when I'm not sucking sugar-coated dicks. <sighs> Why do I put myself in this position? Because it's fun, they said. God, I wonder 
if anyone is still watching, I would and not blame you. If you just clicked away. The button's right there. And click away anytime. Multitasking, sweet! I have people who are otherwise occupied and not noticing how horrible I am at streaming and entertaining people. I am the worst host. There we go. So in this case, the Velcro tie keeps the sling taut between the two points so that it doesn't dick with you. Just occurred to me that the charging handle is right in the way. God, it dicks with the rifle. I mean, it's not a reciprocating charging handle, so that's neato, but I gotta replace my sling points. Oh, God, I'm a moron. Okay, mm, back to the drawing board. Where else can I place the sling point? This is there. If I move it up, it would be... If I move it down. Sling point here. And that would clear the charging handle. That's good. So if sling point were on this side... Oh, do I just want to accept having a black... No, I don't want to accept having a black charging handle. What's the point of ambidextrous charging handle, then? scratcher. Oh, there's a storage compartment in here. Is there? In before I break the pistol grip. Okay, I'm not going to press my luck on that one. It's just pretty sure that's a storage compartment, but I ain't going to press my luck. Okay, not pressing my luck on that. So, sling top between the two points. Gotta lower my sling to the left side. Unless I just tuck it under like that. Is that acceptable to me? Is that acceptable to me? You're not charging with your fire control hand. Well, I am right-handed, so I would be charging with my left hand which would not be the fire control, which would be blocked by the sling. So, fire control would be this. I charged it a while ago with my fire control hand just to see if you could charge it on the right side still with the sling blocking it. You can, but now i got to relocate the sling because I'm an idiot and did not think about the charging handles. Bear with me on this. Is that about the size? Yep.
These charging handles are two major obstacles start to finish, it seems. What was my problem with the charging handles earlier on? Other than my torque wrench not working. To be fair, everything from Desert Tech has worked fine. The torque wrench is not from Desert Tech, it's from Fix It Sticks, and it's a torque limiter that's 80 inch pounds. It was cheap. Oh, yeah. For the bipod. Yeah, good point. I still like that it has ambidextrous charging handles. That is neat. And it's really the only bullpup with ambidextrous charging handles, so... Still neat. Where is the... Screwdriver. How blind am I? Pretty blind, it turns out. Head, which went somewhere again. Perpendicular, 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 good. How much for these? Fifteen. even possible. Is this the real life? Okay, so it fits in the bottom ones. A little bit of play. Oh, it won't fit there because it's hitting the bipod. That's why it's not fitting. Okay, that fit. Cool. The really sad part is how old most of these accessories are. I started buying all my MDR accessories three years ago when I ordered my MDR. A lot of these accessories have just been sitting, chilling in my gun closet for quite a while. You, be gone, thought.
going to shoot off for TGS. TGS is going to shoot off for TGS. TGC is the gun collective. Anyway, have a good night, Vandalistica Vlogs. Ah, the Day Lingon Show. to this. Have a good one. see, is there anything else other than fixing this I gotta do? I think fixing it is all I gotta do. I really suck at streaming. I should have been far more prepared for this. Should have thought this out more. This guy. Okay. Well, that's easy. At least it's nice and stiff. So that's what's happening with my... Oh god! I should have been paying more attention.
being a whore. Huh. Okay. And like that, I do not like Emlock. How can this possibly be this difficult? yourself I, yep, like that, I dislike Emlock. Or yourself. You're done with this MLAC bullshit. Uh. Step one, hold it with pliers. Step two, kill it with fire. Step three, I stripped out the screw. Gah. Screw Mlock with the pogo stick. This is ass cancer. Put all this shit back in the bag. Start with the new M-Lock rail. That sucks 90% less. this yellow shit on the screws that is making it so difficult to turn them. I could show this on camera. There's yellow stuff on the screws that is making this just a pain in the butt to turn. I'll be back with some, like, a, something to grab them.
and I'm back with pliers. Or pliers? Don't care what these are called. Step one. Hold the net. Grasp firmly. Step one, sorry, now we're at like step 12 or something. Thread the stuff so that the yellow stuff isn't as awful. Why is this necessary with M-Lock? M-Lock had potential, but then they had to put this goo stuff on the screws. I get it. If you want us to M-Lock the screws, tell us. If you want us to Loctite the screws, tell us to Loctite the screws. But don't screw us like this. God, this is awful. perpendicular like you're supposed to be. Stop being a whore and just do it. If you're gonna be a whore, you go and get the pliers. Pliers don't fit. Stop it being a whore! Fifteen. Can at least torque this one. Good. Why are you the stupidest creature? 
on the planet. we go. That was way too much effort. Mlock is ass. I have learned this. Baby, you know this. The neighbors do exorcisms on Thursdays. Three people are supposedly watching, and they're all ashamed of me for sucking so much at a system everybody else loves.
Here we go. It was way too much effort for some stupid M-Lock rails. I've learned my lesson. Don't cheap out. Don't cheap out on the M-Lock rail sections. Three people still watching. I'm honestly impressed. I mean, they're all probably AFK. should be assembled. Move to self and get a rubber mallet. Hey John Z, welcome back. You've been gone a while. And I have been stuck and stupid for a while. Made some mis expensive mistakes.
torque thingy. Uh, this, this is a Wheeler fat wrench. I think it was like $30 on Amazon. It's so useful. It's useful for scopes, the MDR. It's just great. Just the sling because I'm a doofus. This is not the right sling point to use for this. In case you were wondering what mistakes I made, I've never really had an M-Lock gun before, so I didn't know how to do M-Lock, and I just absolutely mauled the inside of the polymer of the M-Lock slots. It'll happen to pretty much any polymer M-Lock slot that, well, frankly, if you just maul it, because you have no idea how to use M-Lock. Uh-huh, that's me. Uh, there's your sign. changed by doing this. Worrying about this thing more than you need to, maybe. I am a huge fan of having a perfect sling, and in this case, I want to get it away from the charging handle so that I can use the charging handle without any issue. The buckle is clear of that. No, is that? No, that's not acceptable to me. Too much interference there.
So now, the charging handle is free. While it looks like it blocks this stuff, it really doesn't. So... Neato. Why is that like that? In my mind before I typed it. Yes, I am looking for perfection. So this needs to get tucked in there too. That's good and tight. Should have bought a Glock then. Should have bought a Glock for what? Oh, perfection? Nah, Glock is in perfection. go nice and tight that is what I want you serious now it interferes with your grip actually that's kind of neato okay, why did it why did it get slack where did it get slack from about a Glock then, so... Oh, message retracted. Oh, I did not see the juicy details of that message. Ah, nice and tight comment. Yes, that's what she said. I remember that. That's what you said.
that. Should be good. Let's see. Nice tight grip in there. That's actually kind of neat. Good clearance from the optic. Good. Good clearance from the optic. Thumb can still work that normally. That's a question. Do I want to put this there instead and have the sling go there so it interferes with nothing? So the sling is connecting this line like that. So do I want this sling point attached here so the sling is like this instead? Bound like that. Thoughts? Verify function? No, I have not shot the gun yet. I mean, you can shove a mag in, an empty mag. It locks back. Oh. So, locks back. And then if I try to close it on an empty, Yeah, and an empty mag does that, and then I can close the bolt. So, actually, here's a good question. Someone leaves the charging handle halfway in and then drops the bolt. It works. So if you lock it back, the bolt release does nothing, for good reason, because it's locked back. If you start to drop it, and then it does nothing, the charging handle is loose. So if I just put it like there, and then drop the bolt, yeah, locks the charging handles forward, that's neat. I did not consider the charging handles. Do I want to put... This can't even rotate there, can it? No, I won't even do that anymore. I don't like that. I've always had it at the top rail. If I put it here, then it would be like that, still interfering with the charging handle. That's a good question. This is a lot, uh, man. Charging handles really threw me through a loop on this one. <laughs> That's not the magazine release. That's the magazine release. Extended charging handles? No. These are already pretty high profile comparatively, and you pull them out like that. So these get to be pretty large if you want them to be. So they're fine as is. If I put my optic farther forward, my sling point farther back, it goes against my rules of slinging by having the sling points as far away from each other as possible. But the name of not blocking controls. It would also allow me to take the sling point off the handguard. 
going to try it. Out of curiosity, what happens if I put this on the gas block? That's right. Oh, it doesn't actually line up with the other rails. That's why it's not going on. Okay. So, something like that. Get rid of this stupid sucker. Now move these back. where ergonomically would be best for this. That should be good. This is the farthest rearward front sling point I have ever tried. And this is just stupid. Let's do it. God, that's so stupid. This works. This will trigger me timbers so hard. That, that, that's a pathetic, pathetically small sling distance. Sling radius. I gotta try this on because this is gonna be weird. Whoop. Well, it fit, and the gun ran just fine. Unfortunately, it is like the tiniest, 
you know how sight radius, uh, a short sight radius on a handgun makes it difficult to shoot accurately? That's what a short sight, a short sling radius is like. The longer your sling radius, the more stable the sling is when carried with two points. But when it's this short, it's... I don't know how I feel about it. It's weird. Very weird. I'm honestly trying to decide what to do with this. Do I keep it like that? The original connection would work better as a sling, but it interfered too much with different functions of the rifle for me to be happy with it. Alternatively, I could charge the gun like an AK over the top, but I don't like that. So I could have the sling going across the side. I could actually remove this and just run it like an AK, but I don't want to do that. Defeats the point of getting a gun with ambidextrous charging handles. Keep in mind, this isn't a problem with the gun. Everyone else just lazily throws a sling on and doesn't care about this stuff. But I care. I seek perfection in slinging. And I didn't expect this much of a curveball to be thrown at me. The gun slings just fine. But with my pursuit of perfection, it gets annoying. I've never thought... <laughs> well, it's not the sling or the gun. The sling, it's a sling. You, you could, by the way, my idea of binding it with a Velcro zip tie and having it taut between the two points... That's not just for the arena adaptive sling. No matter what gun you have, this is an awesome idea. Because it keeps the gun away from the function of your firearm, keeps it from drooping. You know, you don't want you don't want your gun, your sling, like drooping down here while you are using the gun. That's awful. So the Velcro zip tie idea and keeping it taut between the two points is a great idea. However, I never really considered... Oh, this? This is red. Uh, I'm not sure if it shows up as pink on the... Yeah, it kind of shows up as pink on the um, camera. But it's a very, very vibrant red. I, I really wouldn't call it pink. This side is pink. The flip side that's more pale is pink. But this side is definitely red. And I choose red so you can see it in low light better. Let me think. So, we have the option of sling point there, up here. Sling point, let's see, go across. Actually, that would be about perfect. If I could... I think I found what I'm going to do. The problem I have is that this is an offset sling point. So that puts my sling point either here or here. If it's up here, it's interfering with the charging handle. If it's down here, it's interfering with controls and my grip. I'm going to get one of the M-Lock... Um, it's a really low profile, and it puts a QD stud like there. So, imagine something like that. Or, actually, I'm going to flip it to the other side to model this. Imagine that. I'm going to get one of those, which would put it like this, in the middle, so you still have access to your charging handle, and still have access to your controls, and have a good grip. I think that's what I'm going to do. Oh, I have to buy one. 
Give me a second. Cat wants into the bathroom. Yeah, I'll have to buy one of those. Oop. So let's see, sling point to there, but also streamline this point, which is neat. <laughs> no cat cam. Nope. Alternatively, like that. That's a weird idea. There might be a third option. Give me a second. Wanna... Did I just close the bolt? That doesn't even coexist with that thing. Okay. You're right. Even if I wanted to have the bipod... Let's see. If I send this backwards... Unhand me, villain. If you wanted to run the charging handles, you really can't. So running that backwards isn't much of an option. That's a pretty good lean there. It's a pretty good height for that bipod leg. Which allows you, where's my 30? You get, geez, good height even with a 30 rounder. Probably e easily get, yeah, 40 rounder. Some pretty good height on that bipod. I have one 40 rounder, but it is loaded currently, and I suppose I. Could shove it in and be careful. 
Okay, here is a 30 rounder and a 40 rounder, so 20, 30, 40. Bipod at, bipod at minimum height. So in case you wanted to just see through the receiver, so that's pretty neat. So a ten rounder. It's actually a pretty neat view. Yeah, I don't charge or slam the bolt. That's why I removed the ejection panels and why I'm keeping the bolt locked back. And safety on and not touching the trigger. So. With the bipod legs at the shortest, a 10 round mag will not exit the receiver. Got to lift the gun up. 20 round mag. We'll just start to monopod equally with the rear. So you'll have two points of contact on the front and two points on the contact at the rear. A 30 round mag starts to have the gun almost perfectly horizontal, as in range TV explained that with a bipod you might have trouble larger than 30 round and a 40 rounder you're at a negative angle now but then you can extend the legs now I'm at a notable positive angle with a 40 rounder Three rounders are fine. Twenty rounders are floating now. And a ten rounder with the highest uh, bipod setting will actually drop out of the rifle now without having to have the rifle be lifted. So that's kind of neat. I just realized you can push the rifle down from the top. You push the mag down from the action. It's actually kind of neat being able to just see through the receiver like that. Okay, take my loaded magazines and put them to the side, away from the rest of them. So these are my empties. To the moon leg settings. Oh, yes! To the moon! If I fold the legs while they are extended, that's how far back they reach. So, it's kind of neat. If I fold the legs while they're fully extended forward, that's how far forward they reach. So 
so I actually like how they are when they fold backwards. I like that actually. Out of curiosity. Oops. Haha. <laughs> Let's hope that didn't damage anything. Eh, a little scuff on the charging handle. Just a three thousand dollar rifle. Don't mind me. Mm-hmm. Honeymooners. I've heard of that before. Give me a second. Yeah, I can't want it out of the bathroom. <laughs> I just realized there is something I haven't done yet, which is apply the saddle blanket. This is from Hoptic USA. Oh, it comes with two of them? I didn't know it came with two of them. Let's see. This tells me precisely nothing. Very much nothing. What in the world could that be for? So that's a question. Do I... I think I just put one like that. Oh, yes, I'm muted. Sorry. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I... Sorry, just muted. Um, provided alcohol wipe to apply the uh, Hoptic USA saddle blanket, which goes like that, and is a padded cheek plate for rifles. 
Sorry for being muted. <laughs> muted. Someone uh, not yelling at you, I hope. Mm, yeah, I think only John Z yelling at me. That's neat. This uh, saddle blanket from Hoptic USA comes with the Desert Tech logo. Kind of neat. There we go. Is that leather? It is foam of some kind? I know there are leather or fake leather ones you can buy, but this is the one uh, you can make. Yeah. yeah, I think neoprene. Neoprene is what I think would be the closest material. I've seen... Uh, ones for ARs that are made of leather, and for, like, um, lever-action rifles that are leather. But this is the only one that I know of that is made specifically for the MDR. And I'll say, I can pop this piece off to show you. Not worth it. I would say... It fits rather well. So that's neat, it actually came with two of them. So if this one ever gets worn out or damaged, I can just replace it. That's pretty neato. What's your birthday present, John Z? <laughs> You're holding it. Wait, did you order an MDR as well? Did you order an MDR as well, uh, John? Oh, I ordered it for you. I see how it is. <laughs> I 
think I like that. I'm going to get rid of that. This guy, there's my hammer. I mauled the sh shit out of that plastic. Oh, um... If you see, let's see if I can show this on cam. You see that there's yellow stuff on the threads of the M-block screw? Well, that makes the M-block, the screw, extremely difficult to turn. Which, in turn, made it so that I hope this shows up on camera. You see the... Okay. That's what the unlock should look like, right? Crisp lines uh, down, oh, down in there. Come on, crisp lines. When I show you this one, it's all marred up because I suck at using unlock. Yeah, that's on the foregrip. That solves my problems. Jeez, that's just a technique issue. Turns out I just suck at doing the handguard. Thankfully, the they do sell um, replacement handguards, so not much has been lost, like 30 bucks or something. Gah. Okay, back to the mallet, the hammer.
30, 30. As far as a compact way to store a bipod, that's not that bad. Other than the charging handle, handle interference, it's not a bad way to store a bipod. What's that stainless key chuck thingy? Stain... This? This is the fix-it sticks that I bought to go with the torque limiter. Um, how do I do this, that thing? Something like this? Nope. Like that. Torque limiter for 80 inch pounds. This is supposed to give me an 80 inch pounds torque wrench to use on the barrel screws, on the barrel nuts. However, I don't know why they are, why this one isn't working. I have no idea, but it refuses to, I guess, release. I mean, if I try it again, where is it? Okay, you're the right size. So these are supposed to be down to 80 inch pounds, and it is supposed to get you very close back to your old zero from before you removed the barrel. And it just, it doesn't turn over no matter how hard I turn it. Let's see if I I'm gonna put in a sacrificial bit that I don't care about. This. I'm gonna see if it's just broken. Yeah, that that's just not going. So this is an 80 inch pound limiter. I'm no expert, but 80 inch pounds isn't that much. I should be able to easily exceed 80 inch pounds with my fingers. Instead, I start to maul and lose grip before I get to 80 inch pounds, or supposedly 80 inch pounds. Yeah. I think my limiter is broken. So the fix it sticks, kind of a neat idea. It's like a, I guess, modular torque wrench system. Unfortunately, it sucks in application. Or at least the limiter doesn't work. However, if I want to, Can get this guy up to 65, which isn't what it is meant to do. Sixty. This at least will get me to 65. Holy crap. Okay.
This is telling me. It's a whole, it's a whole set. What's a whole, s oh, this thing. Yes, the Physic Sticks. This is the whole set and comes with a bunch of bits. This bit included with it. It's a whole set and it, they offer different limiters that this one is set. Uh, I wonder if you can see the focus. Anyway, right there, it says 80 inch pounds. So you buy the limiters separately that go onto this. Now it's fair to note the limiters would go onto anything. Because it's the standard hex bit style thing. So I can take the limiter if I wanted to and put it on a normal screwdriver. Which is what I'm going to do right now because I'm a moron. Where's my other... Where in the... Oh, God, I'm blind. Okay, there's no way 80 is that tight. So I was thinking, maybe I just don't have enough torque on the fix-it sticks. This cannot be right. Okay. Screw it. I'm just doing 65 inch pounds. Because that is life. The Wheeler wrench, which is by far a much better uh, torque wrench, comes with everything shown here. And it's 30, 30 bucks on Amazon. I really like the Wheeler wrench. And, I mean... The Gun Collective recommends the Wheeler Wrench. A ton of gunsmiths rec recommend the Wheeler Fat Wrench. It's just a good torque wrench. It's fair to note, the Wheeler goes from 10 to 65. Whereas the fix-it sticks, assuming it works, they offer to like a hundred, from like five to 160. But you have to buy each torque limiter separately. This is all in one and adjustable, which is really neat. And this is one of the only adjustable ones that has a good reputation. Fix-it sticks has failed me. So let's see. Hammer goes over there. That's a good question. With a flash hider and not a muzzle brake, do you think shooting like this would be a problem? I'm inclined to say yes, but I'm not sure. It's aluminum, not steel. the saddle blanket. Saddle blanket's cool. Try 
try it out. Oh, try out shooting with it forward? Am I willing to blow up my bipod legs for the sake of science? I mean, I already kind of don't like having it forward just because it increases the length of it. I actually kind of like it at an angle because my hand still works well. can actually brace against it for actually a pretty neat grip there. So I can go like this and I can brace against it with my forearm for a pretty neat grip. It's actually really stable. Like this, kind of unstable. You know, it's mostly supported on my elbows. Elbows. But with this locked in with the bipod on my forearm. It's actually really stable. I like it. I'm thinking I might keep it with the legs back, but not all the way back. Alternative... Ooh, that's an idea. Okay. Bear with me for a moment on this. And do you see the slots in the bipod body that lock in the different positions? What if I milled a slot between the last and second to last position? So that there was a position between this and this. So a position like there. Or, let's see, if I were to... Yeah, a position like there. Instead of there or there. Just legs back on the M-lock. So put the legs there instead. But I want the legs there. It really wouldn't give me any difference for this. I like the idea of milling a new slot there so I can have an in-between position. Something not there, but like there, so I can still, okay, maybe a little bit farther down. So instead of there, like there, so I can still run the action just fine. Ah, you're saying, so when it's forward like this, draw it back, so instead of ending there, it ends about, what, there? It's not as bad. Could also just get a suppressor. That's also an option. Just get a suppressor. I think I'm going to mill the legs. Never actually thought of that, but I like that a lot. I think this chat has gone on for four hours now. It's outrageous. Move the M lock and yes, yes, order suppressor ASAP. I have procrastinated and avoided making the NFA jump for so long. Uh, JTR35, welcome to the stream. I am horrible at this, and I've made many mistakes in this stream. <laughs> uh, learning mistakes. Mistakes I will learn from.
not. Just shined it at a mirror and blinded myself. I gotta say, I like the saddle blanket. The saddle blanket's pretty rad. Uh, this is a cloud defensive owl. It's a $400 light. It is 1200 lumens, powered by an 18650, and 50,000 candela. So, pretty much the brightest and most powerful flashlight you could get that runs on an 18650. And definitely the only one that is modeled like this, where there's no wires leading out to a pressure pad, it's all a singular unit. And that is why I bought it, because it is a singular unit, and I'm tired of, like, when running a charging handle, yanking wires. I've had that happen with other guns, and wires always yank out. Even with Surefire, the wire is always the weak point. And yeah, 400 is quite a bit. This guy. Probably one of those, yeah, it is nice. Probably one of those premium lights you could get on the market right now. Same with the Hartman. If you didn't catch my spiel before it, I got this is a $500 optic 550 normal MSRP. It's got a ton of really nice features. It's like an EOTech but with all the problems worked out. It's got an auto, uh, auto on auto off motion activated feature, a internal rechargeable battery that you just plug in via USB right there. Just a rechargeable USB battery and a backup CR123 battery. And it's motion activated uh, to turn on and it recognizes when you shoulder the rifle. Like right now, it's on. And if I set it down and leave it for 10 seconds, it's off. So, yeah, sling, put this thing back there, but I would have interference with the charging handle. God, where do I want to put this sling? Alternatively, I could just decide I don't want to use a sling. That certainly is an option. Put the sling point up here and then just not have the sling on if I don't want it. I think that's my best bet to just not use the sling. Oh, another feature about the Owl is toolless design. You don't need anything because it has everything you need integrated into it already. So the tail cap tightens and loosens it. So yeah, no sling. That would have saved me a whole lot of headache. Probably two hours, three hours. More Mueller.
So yeah, no sling on this. I can work with that. Solve the sling conundrum by just saying, screw the sling, because it's not worth it. Oh, there's an idea. Bear with me for a moment. I need the front sling point just to have a front sling point. And the rear sling point just to have a rear sling point. What if I bind up the sling and, like, Velcro it to the side of the receiver so it's just chilling right here. Thoughts? <laughs> JJ doesn't have all the answers for me because he doesn't know shit about slings. I am the sling master. Resize the sling for the front sling for the front. My thought was what if I want to include a sling anyway? So it is sized properly for this now, but what if I don't send it forward? What if, instead of having it go forward at all, I bind it all up and shove it like there? Oh, I'm not thinking range bag. I'm thinking home defense or war fighting. For range, I don't need a sling at the range. I have a table and a bipod and better things than a sling. So, like, for home defense... To just bind the sling up... Keep it... No, that looks stupid and it's bulky and it's just a bad solution. Yeah, no sling. Screw the sling. I'm done with the sling. Saddle blanket. Optic. Awesome. 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 Awesome sling, but not on this rifle. Actually, I think in general, this rifle, with my idea of binding the sling it doesn't jive yeah Jeez. Okay. I think that about covers it. I made the sling. The, the rear point. I have my awesome goodies on it. I scratched my owl already because... Screw the expensive things I buy, am I right? Um...
Another neat point is you don't necessarily... I could still stow the legs like this. I don't necessarily need the charging handles. Because all I need to do is be able to pull them back once to chamber the first round. Empty. So all I would do is chamber the first round for home defense, not use the charging handles anymore, and if I reload, I put in new mag and close the bolt. It actually is lighter than I thought it would be for all the crap I've put on this. I think I'm going to call it it for the night. I'm going to end the stream. Thank you very much for sticking around, John Z. For anyone else who slaved through this. I'm going to call the stream. Have a good night, friends. And this has been the worst video about the MDR that will ever exist on the internet. Have a good night, guys.